Hey guys, and welcome back to Spooktober. I'm Vera Wack, and today I'll be watching The Shining. Surprising no one, this is a Stephen King novel. So the novel was written in like the 70s at some point, and this movie was made in the 80s. We have Stanley Kubrick as the director, and what I know from him is that he's like a perfectionist, and if he needs to take 150 takes to get exactly what he wants, he will do it. And because of that, I know Shelley Duvall has been like, known to say that those like physical emotional mental torture during the whole filming of the shining i'm not 100 percent sure of the details but it didn't seem like it was a fun time for her at all i hope you're ready for the shining as far as i know this is like one of the best horror movies don't quote me on that let's check out the shining okay this is like super secluded normally this would be fine Oh, oh, look, another car. Oh, they're not completely alone. Oh, oh, this is fine. There's plenty of people around. We got three cars already. There's a lot of people there. Okay, this is not so secluded. Is this like a ski resort? The interview. Oh, for a job. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Allman. This is my secretary, Allman? Susie. I want almonds now. They really want to go and live in that hotel for the winter. It'll be lots of fun. Oh, for sure, yeah. What about Tony? Tony, it's a torch. Oh, come on, Tony, don't be oh, silly. Oh, Tony. I don't want to call them Mrs. Torch. I've seen this before. This thing. We're all going to have a real good time. Is Tony, like, the smart one of the bunch? Jack is uh, going to take care of the Overlook for us this winter. What line of work are you in now? I'm a writer. Um, of course he is, Stephen King novel. Well, this ought to be quite a change for you. I'm looking for a change. That's good. Oh, Almond, not Almond. Got it. Our season here runs from uh, May 15th to October 30th. Then we close down completely. Seems to me that the skiing up here will be fantastic. Yeah, I thought it was a ski resort. So they need someone to take care of the place during the closure? Physically, it's, it's not a very demanding job. Mentally? Tremendous sense of isolation. Five months of peace is just what I want. This seems like perfect. Solitude and isolation can of itself become a problem. Not for me. How about your wife and son? How do you think they'll take to it? Probably fine. They'll love it. <laughs> Told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the winter of 1970? What tragedy? Charles Grady is the winter caretaker. I mean, he seemed like a completely normal individual. He must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. Oh. Killed his family with an axe. Oh, an Stacked axe. Stacked neatly in one of the rooms of the West Wing. I mean, that's pretty freaking extreme. Well... You can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not going to happen with me. Oh, no. Tony, do you think Dad'll get the job? He already did. He's going to phone Wendy up in a few minutes to tell her. That better not happen. Damn it. Oh, my God, this little... This kid has, like, powers? Sounds like you got the job. Right. Tony, why don't you want to go to the hotel? Yeah. I don't know. Please. Please. No. Damn it. I'm Tony. Tell me. Oh, he's gone. Tony's not here right now. What? Is that blood? This has got to be a dream. It better be a dream. Oh. Are those the two girls? Danny is dreaming this or seeing this? Do you remember if you smelled anything funny or saw any bright flashing lights or- No. Oh no, I don't like this. Can you remember what you were doing just before you started brushing your teeth? Having a chat with Tony. Talking to Tony. Tony says imaginary friend. I don't think it's imaginary. Does Tony ever tell you to do things? I 
don't want to talk about Tony anymore. <gasps> So I guess this is like the, the the Stephen King usually has like a supernatural aspect and Danny has Tony. Danny started talking to Tony at the time we put him in nursery school. He didn't like it too much at first. And then he had an injury, so we kept him out. Head injury? A while. What sort of injury did he have? Uh, he dislocated his shoulder. Oh, okay. My husband grabbed his arm, you know, to pull him away from him. It's, it's just the sort of thing you do a hundred times with a child. Yeah, but he freaking dislocated the shoulder. Used too much strength and he injured Danny's arm. Oh, you know, just normal stuff. Wendy, I'm never going to touch another drop. And if I do, you can leave me. He hasn't had any alcohol in uh, five months. Oh, that's it? I'm confused about the timeline. I thought this happened like way before, but he hasn't had alcohol in five months. Uh, no? Those are the girls that were murdered with the axe. This is our famous hedge maze. Quite an attraction around here. But I wouldn't want to go in there unless I had an hour to spare to find my way out. Looks pretty big. We always remove all the booze from the premises when we oh, shut makes down. Sense. We don't drink. <laughs> well, then you're in luck. Good thing he stopped drinking. This is Dick Halloran, our head chef. Take care of the Overlook for us this winter. Oh, that's just great. Oh, that's just great. I think it'd be a good idea if you could show Mrs. Torrance the kitchen while I continue on with Jack. Huh. It'd be a pleasure. Why would she be the only one to see the kitchen? Hmm. Hmm. It's big, but it's right. still ain't nothing but a kitchen. Where's all the food? You like lamb, Doc? No. Well, what's your favorite food, then? French fries and ketchup. That's a good... <laughs> French fries and ketchups are good. Well, I think we can manage that, too, Doc. <laughs> He's so good with the kid. I like this chef. How do you know we call him Doc? Oh. You, you called Danny Doc twice just now. I did? Yeah. Well, I guess I probably heard you call him that. Is he also some kind of, like... Oh. In here, Mrs. Torrance. Oh my god, I would go crazy with this. Yes, please. Hot and cold syrup. That noise. Post toasters, cornflakes, sugar. I'd do like some ice cream, Doc. What? Like, telepathy? No problem, Mr. Hubbard. I was just getting to the ice cream. You like ice cream, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> I oh. thought you did. <laughs> I would just have ice cream as a meal when I'm there. Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? Yes. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? His little friend. My grandmother and I could hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouths. She called it shiny. Oh. I thought it was just the two of us that had the shine to us. How long have you been able to do it? This is freaking dislocated shoulder. Why don't you want to talk about it? I'm not supposed to. Who said you ain't supposed to? Is it Tony? Tony? Just Tony the one that tells you things? It's like I go to sleep and he shows me things. But when I wake up, I can't remember everything. Is Tony like a possession? Has Tony ever told you anything about this place? I don't know. <gasps> Are you scared of this place? No. Is there something bad here? Yes. Well... Oh, that's not a no. You're scared of him too, so he's having an inch Oh. <laughs> no, eh? Tony knows you're lying. What is in room 237? You ain't got no business going in there anyway, so stay out. Still like six months. Or four, I don't remember. Oh, a month later. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh, here it starts. They're all alone now. To keep America clean. That's what I would do. Spend all my time and go in the maze? I'm coming in close. Oh, they are going in the maze. I guess it's like a normal thing. So if they've been here a month, are they experts in the maze now? 
Is that a baseball bat? Oh, a miniature of the maze. It would be pretty neat if you move things around in the maze, it actually moves outside. I mean, that's a really smart way of getting around instead of doing the whole walking thing. Oh, is he gonna go to room 237? I don't know which room we're at. Oh. Was that it? Go in, Danny. You know you want to. Ah. Oh. Damn it. Oh, is, is that where the bodies were piled up? After they were freaking hacked away with an axe. He seems like he's uh, getting bad in the writing spirit, huh? Don't interrupt me while I'm writing. Get a lot written today? He does not seem very agreeable. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. When I'm in here, that means that I am working. That means don't come in. Okay. I think you can handle that. Maybe you can be nicer about it. Yeah. Why don't you start right now and get out of here? What a freaking douchebag. Okay. Oh. You should have left him. For sure. That's a lot of snow. She's like always wearing red. Oh no, this is like the, the shining noise, I think. Oh, what? Is he like... Going crazy? Uh, <laughs> no contact at all with the outside? Oh man. I have no idea how those things work. This is KDK1. We're receiving you. Over. Hi, this is Wendy Torrance at the Overlook Hotel. Is there anything else we can do for you, Mrs. Torrance? Over. No, she just wants to talk to someone. Well, if you folks have any problems up there, just give us a call. I think it might be a good idea if you leave your radio on all the time now. It was real nice talking to you. She, like, doesn't get to talk to her husband. Um, the kid's not, probably not the best conversationalist. He's wearing red now. Nope. <laughs> Turn around. Hello, Danny. Come and play with us. No? No, thank you. Oh. Ever. And ever. Jeez. Poor kid. Damn it, Tony. Yeah, uh, I guess this is where they were killed? Remember what Mr. Halloran said? It's just like pictures in a book, Danny. It isn't real. But it is. Can I go to my room and get my fire engine? Not right now. Daddy's asleep. Oh. I won't make any noise. No, he's gonna freaking hurt you. Oh, oh, he's not sleeping. Danny, get out of there. Come here for a minute. No, don't do it. Okay. How's it going, Dad? Okay. Yeah, everything's fine. Dad? What? You keep expecting to, like, drop a bomb. You would never hurt Mommy and me, would you? Oh, because he saw The Shining. Did your mother ever say that to you? That I would hurt you? Well, you did. No, Dad. Tony? Yes, Dad. What, is he going to hurt her now? I love you, Danny. You're not very convincing. I would never do anything to hurt you. Never. <laughs> yeah. You know that, don't you? Get out of there, Danny. Get out of there. Uh, 
No. Is it the girls? Is he close to room 237 again? Oh, is that... Oh, no. That's 237! What? How is... What? No. So she's the one doing all the work and he's just writing, I guess? He's dreaming? Whatever. Don't disturb him. He's... Don't go near him. He's like... Okay. What's wrong? He's like terrified. It's the most horrible dream I ever had. It's okay. It's okay now. What's the dream? Axe? Well, I dreamed that I, that I killed you and Danny. Does he have the shining too? Okay. He's so creepy. Okay. Your dad's just got a headache. His clothes are messed up. What the hell happened to him? Oh! How did. She's like stuck between a psycho and a possible psycho? I don't think you Danny's a psycho. Too. Oh. How could you? Oh no. So now she thinks he's hitting him. Oh no. There's red. There's like always red. I mean, there's no booze there, so do whatever you want, I guess. Thankfully, I'm really happy it's empty. Or else he would drink, and then he would definitely kill them all. Goddamn soul. Oh no, don't say that. Hi, Lloyd. What? A little slow tonight, isn't it? Wait, what? What let be? Is this all in his head? Things could be better, Lloyd. I hope it's nothing serious. His family's in the way? <laughs> nothing serious. Nothing an axe can't fix. I didn't hurt him once, okay? It was an accident. You extra foot pounds of energy per second per second. He's trying to justify it. Ugh. Perfectly normal. There's a crazy woman in one of the rooms. She tried to strangle Danny. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what? Listen to Danny. Go check it out. Which room was it? 237. Should be <gasps> the Shining. Our you have to go save Danny. Oh no. Oh, he sees it, doesn't he? Okay. This is a massive bathroom. No toilet paper. Oh, wait, there's a person there. Oh, uh, who are you? Oh, he looks too happy. Is he just gonna, like... She's imaginary, right? Your wife says, Hey, there's a lady that's here, and she, like, tried to strangle her son. Let me just go make out with her. Maybe even have sex, why not? Oh! There's your fantasy. <laughs> Never go back in there. Take the key. <gasps> oh my god. Is, is this gonna be like the hero? Is there a hero? We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Oh. If you need assistance. You could just drive up there. I'm sure it's not that far. He's in Miami, right? Did you find anything? No. Nothing at all. What the? Oh my god, I hate this guy. I just don't understand. Oh no. I feel so bad for her. What about those bruises on his neck? Self-inflicted. I think he did it to himself. Oh no. That's not possible. Just supervise him for the whole time now. <laughs> oh my god, he's like freaking terrified. I think we have to get Danny out of here. Yes! Oh my god, yes! 
Oh. It is so typical of you to create a problem like this when I finally have a chance to accomplish something. She can leave with Danny. I am not gonna let you this up. What the hell? This douchebag is just like, oh my god, can he just like take an axe to himself? Oh man. Oh, this is what this scene is from. I've, saw, I've seen this game so many times. Good evening, Mr. Torrance. Good evening. And so is he imagining himself as like, The Shining is giving him the view of the dude who killed his family with the axe? Or someone else that did that? No charge to you, Mr. Torrance. No charge? I like this place. Your money's no good here. He did sell his soul, right? He said, I would sell my soul for a, a whatever drink. Oh. Wait, did she have a red hand on her butt? What do they call you around here, Jeezy? Uh, Grady, sir. Delbert Grady. Grady? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Weren't you once the caretaker here? Why, no, sir. I don't believe so. Oh. Married man, are you? Yes, sir. Hmm? I have a wife and uh, two, daughters? two daughters, sir. Hmm? Oh. Where are they now? Oh, In pieces, that's... room 237. You were the caretaker here. But you are the caretaker. I mean, he... It... Oh, no. You've always been the caretaker. Your son is attempting to bring an outside party into this situation. The chef? It's his mother. She uh, interferes. They need a good talking to. And good acts, you mean? My girls didn't care for the overlook at first and tried to burn it down. Oh. But I corrected them, sir. And when my wife tried to prevent me, I corrected her. Oh my god, corrected her too with the axe? You are freaking messed up. Red rum! Red rum! Red rum? Red rum! Is that Danny? Red rum! Red rum! Yeah, he needs help. Danny's not here, Mrs. <gasps> Torrance. Oh my god, this place is, like, just not okay. This is KDK1, calling KDK12. Are you receiving- Oh, man. Oh, but you have to go, you have to go, you have to go. 8 a.m., oh. We went from months to days to 8 a.m. Oh, he's flying. Yes. I'm just gonna go and talk to Daddy for a few minutes. Oh, don't do it, he's writing, he's gonna snap. Your kid is, like, messed up. Your husband is messed Take a bet. That's fine. Just normal stuff, you know? Jack? This has gotten so creepy. I'm glad she has a bat with her. I'll work and no play make Jack's a dull boy. Oh, is... Is that all he's been writing? Oh, he snapped. Okay, that's all it is. You're good. You've checked this. Now leave. How many more pages you need to look at, damn it? Like, come on. There's... Oh. How do you like it? <laughs> Stay away. Maybe it was a bad Danny. I think we should discuss what should be done with them. What should be done with them? I think you have some very definite ideas about what should be done with Danny, and I'd like to know what they are. Oh, he's messed up. He's mad. I think maybe he should be taken to a doctor. Yes. You are concerned about him. Does it matter to you at all? 
that the owners have placed their complete confidence and trust in me. You've done nothing. Stay away from me. That is not a big swing. Oh, God. Don't hurt me. I'm not gonna hurt you. Stay away from me. I'm gonna kill you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Oh my God. Give me the bag. Please! Stop it! Give me the bag. You have a couple extra inches, just like freaking clock his head. Give me the bag. Give me the bag. Ah, God damn it! Good! Keep going! Yes! More! Go down and finish! Go down there. Bam! Where is she bringing them? In the freezer? Or is that the fridge? Or just storage? Hey, what are you doing? Okay, bash him once more and then leave him. Open the door! God damn it! Let me out of here! Get Danny and leave. Let me out of here and I'll forget the whole goddamn thing! No, don't trust him. Wendy, baby. Oh no. Oh. I'm gonna go now. Okay, good. I'll bring back a doctor. It's seven. You've got a big surprise coming to you. What? <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Oh, did he sabotage it? Go check out the snow cat. Oh. I think it's like nighttime, isn't it? Seven. The clock said seven. So it's going to be even colder. Oh. Should have just killed him when you had the chance, damn it. 4 p.m. Okay, I guess the clock was wrong. Oh no, is this one of his like... Wait, he can't... They... No, if they're not real, they can't open it. Wendy? Wendy's not here right now. I see you can hardly have taken care of the business. Business? Your heart is not in this. Just give me one more chance to prove it, Mr. Grady. No, he can't open the door. Your wife appears to be stronger than we imagined, Mr. Torrance. She seems to have got the better of you. Oh, yes, she has. Only for the moment. There's nothing I look forward to with greater pleasure. I freaking sold a soul. No! What? That's not possible. Oh my god, hurry up. Hurry up. Hey, Tony. Uh, no, he's, he's, he's not gonna kill her. Uh, Danny, don't do it. Okay, he's not gonna kill her. Okay, that's good. Why don't you put on a little makeup? Red rum. Oh, that's what he saw in the visions. Red rum! Red rum! Red rum! Oh no. Murder! Oh, there he is. Oh, with the axe! That's a tiny window. Wendy? I'm home. Yeah, okay. Bing. Oh, come on, Wendy. Oh, no. Occupied. I can't get out. What do you want him to do? Okay, good. Whew. Oh my... Oh, there he is. Cut his face! Here's Johnny! Cut his face! Damn it. Hand! Oh my god, good job. More. Where the hell's Danny? Can't see anything. Oh, he's coming. You know who's coming. The chef is here. 
Oh, wait. Oh, I... Oh, I thought he ran away, but he ran back inside? Oh, seriously, he doesn't shut? <sighs> oh, imagine getting there and seeing this. He doesn't seem like he can run fast, so that's good. Hello? Taking away your position. Hello? Just a telepath to Danny. Anybody here? Ah! What? Oh no. Oh, he was just turned out. Danny, you gotta run. You gotta go now. Danny! Oh yeah, he's gone outside. Go. Wait, both doors are open now. Yeah, he's gone in the- Oh, he's in the maze! Go check it out! Oh yeah, Danny's an expert in the maze. He's never been, because he's too busy all work and no play. Made Jack a dull boy. I'm coming, Dan! <laughs> oh, damn it, his footsteps. Double back? You can't get away! Yes, he can. She's like looking indoors, they're outside! Ah! Uh... This is... this is so messed up. Oh, okay, he's doubling back. You could do it, Danny. She's just so lost indoors. That's not where they are. Is she seeing this now? Yeah, get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, this is terrifying. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Where'd he go? Smart kid. Danny! Oh my god, more kid. Okay. Oh, I hope this is okay. Please don't run into him. Oh, I really hope he gets lost in the maze. Where are you going, Jack? Just collapse, please. Don't yell, don't yell. I mean, Jack can just chop through the hedges. He's got an axe. Take the snow cat. Go! Hug later! Oh good, he could freaking freeze to death, please. Oh good. Oh my god, they're getting away? Yes, please make it, please make it. Oh my god, they made it. They actually made it. What's wrong? You lost? Good. Collapse and freeze to death. Douchebag. Oh yeah! Good riddance. Good... riddance. Why are we back here? Is he in the pictures now? For some reason? He is, right there. 1921? Overlook Hotel. July 4th, Ball in 1921. So was he... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure what the hell's going on. 
Was he there and then he died and then came back as Jack? Holy crap. That was something. Okay, I was not expecting them to survive, but this is actually a really pleasant, pleasant um, surprise. I'm glad that Danny and Wendy survived. Oh my god. That would have been freaking horrible. Yeah, this is this like this is sort of what I imagine would happen if ever I'm somewhere secluded and there's another person there. Um, no thank you. No thank you. It's just terrifying. I'm so glad that the chef got to well, I mean, okay, sorry. I'm glad that the chef came to rescue them. I'm not happy that he died, but because him coming they got to escape. Since the get-go, we can see that Jack is not a good father, not a good husband either. I really feel bad for Wendy. Oh man, I wish she would have left him, you know, when he first dislocated Danny's shoulder. Uh, I'm also a little confused about the timeline thing because I thought that when the shoulder was dislocated, he came home, he was, you know, drunk, had too much to drink, and then that's when he said, if I drink again, you can leave me or whatever, but I guess the, that only happened like five months ago, but the dislocation happened like three or five years ago. So I think I missed something in there because it doesn't quite make sense to me. In the comments, if you were to be paid to spend six months in a hotel like that and taking care of it, would you do it? I can see why this is a horror movie, even though, even though they survived at the end, it's just the whole suspense and not well not knowing what the hell's going on what's going to happen and just his the psychoticness of uh, of jack is insane honestly a great movie suspense filled and it wasn't just like full of jump scares it was just tension building the music really set the mood i find with always being creepy always suspenseful and i'm like any second now something's gonna happen because this music is telling me this but it didn't always happen. It just served to build up the tension, like ramp it up like slowly and consistently. There's like a constant sense of something's gonna go terribly wrong at any second now. And it does, but it doesn't. So many things. I think it was really well made. I'm curious to read the book now to see how different it is. Because, well, let's face it, Stephen King has like so many books. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get it. I'll have to populate, I have to, Put all my books in here at some point because there's going to be more and more. All right, it is time for IMDb trivia for The Shining. Oh, wow. Okay, so for the scene in which Jack breaks down the bathroom door, the props department built a door that could e be easily broken. However, Jack Nicholson had worked as a volunteer fire marshal and tore it apart far too easily. Props department were then forced to build a stronger door. That makes sense. And I wonder so how Kubrick is known to do so many takes. I wonder how many takes it took that one. Like how many doors did they have to have before Kubrick was okay with the scene? So I, I just imagine they have like hundreds of doors in storage just to be used for the scene. Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall have expressed open resentment against the reception of this film, feeling that critics and audiences credit uh, credited Kubrick solely for the film's success without considering the effort of the actors crew or the strength of Stephen King's underlying material. Nicholson and Duvall have said that the film was one of the hardest of their careers. In fact, Nicholson considers Duvall's performance the most difficult role he's ever seen an actress take on. Duvall also considers her performance the hardest of her life. From what I've heard, that makes complete sense. And it's very unfortunate because just, we only see one scene, one take, but having to do like hundreds of takes beforehand, that is extremely difficult that is physically mentally just psychologically exhausting especially with Shelley Duvall's role having to be like constantly on edge for like most of the uh, the movie terrified screaming just that is not an easy state to be in and she looks properly scared and terrified so she did absolutely amazing Jack Nicholson did amazing I, I wouldn't credit Kubrick for everything obviously I think the the use of red throughout the scenes was amazing and just either someone was wearing it there was like a red armchair there was a red telephone there's just some red and i really like that but that's not the entirety of it and plus stephen king's book obviously that's where the story came from i don't know how much they adapted it how much they changed it so i can't comment on that but it's very unfortunate that critics 
and audiences just say, Kubrick was amazing. He did this. And it's like everyone else just gets cast aside. That's a bit shitty. Oh, there were so many changes to the script during shooting, a scene change was made almost daily, that Jack Nicholson claimed he stopped reading it. He would read only the new pages that were given to him each day. Nicholson also said that eventually, when presented with a revised scene, he would throw it in the trash knowing another was coming anyway. That is, it, honestly, that feels like such a terrible work environment for actors. It's like, hey, this is the script, and then every day it's like, yeah, we're making changes. It's like, holy crap, like it's, it's not easy. It definitely isn't. And then especially if you have to do several takes of it, it doesn't seem like a very good um, thing working for Kubrick. I don't know if he's like this for all of his movies that he's done, but I'd be curious to know what other actors' experience is with him on the other movies. Well, that is it for IMDb Trivia for The Shining. Really an amazing movie. Very, very tense. I think that's what I really like about it is tense and just not knowing, well, what's going to happen, obviously, which happens in all the movies. But I thought that maybe the kid would survive when he got out the window and she told him to run. But I was like, oh, no, he might freeze, but then he might meet up with uh, the chef and then they'll go. But I really thought that Wendy was going to die. I felt like she was trapped in there and there was no way out. She couldn't fit out the window. But that didn't happen. So I was pleasantly surprised. Before we go, just a quick note, if you do enjoy the reactions or want to support the channel, you can sign up to Patreon. That's where you get full-length reactions of all the reactions I do. And you get to vote on polls to see what movies I'll watch on the channel. You also get a chance to win all the marbles. That's where you get to suggest a movie for me to watch. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.